Well, what we're going to do is uh, 8D, this will finish up Unit 8, uh, which is on genetics, and this one's on pedigrees, mutations, and karyotopes. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about pedigrees, and the basic idea of a pedigree is so that we can follow generations of individuals, doesn't matter whether they're human, um, animal, plant, um, or fungus. But the first thing we have to understand is we have some basic terminology. So when we look at pedigrees, we can see round circles are actually the female. And if it's an empty circle, it's with the trait. No, oh, excuse me, without the trait. And then if it's an empty square, it's the boy without a trait. And then if we actually move over here, we have girl with a trait. And we have a boy with a trait. And then we can also show generations where we have mom and dad and we have the boy and the son. And then what can we tell from a pedigree? You can tell number of generations, basically number of lines you see. You can see relationships, um, where they um, mother and daughter. You can also tell mother and husband. You can tell husband and son. You can tell grandkids, great grandkids, um, everything. So you can also tell dominant recessive if the whole box is colored in. Dominant if half the box covered in, it's recessive, usually called a carrier. And then you can also tell whether it's a sex length, whether it actually comes from the egg and the sperm, or it's autosomal. In other words, it forms in the individual. This one can be passed from individual to individual. This one only affects the one individual. Okay, so here's a pedigree. So if we take a look at it, we can see we have one, two, three generations. If you look down here, we have homozygous, homozygous, heterozygous, and we have wild type, in other words, normal. So if we take a look, we actually have a couple of carriers up here, and they get married, and they have how many kids? They have a daughter, they have a son, they have another daughter, and we have another son. And I'm not sure whether or not we can talk about relative age, because the closer you are to this stem, I don't think that's necessarily true. But you notice that the um, looks like the dominant gene from each one actually went to this female, went to this male, we have another carrier, and then we have an affected male. So let's talk about it. Is this a dominant or is this a recessive one? Do we all get it or just uh, some? This is a recessive. Is it a sex linked one or is it an autosomal? In other words, is it affecting, looks like just one, in, uh, one sex or could it affect all of them? And this is an autosomal. Okay, and how many generations do you see? Uh, we talked about that. We have three. So we have grandparents, parents, and kids. Okay, here we have one. Um, looks like we have an affected uh, woman who had an affected daughter, had an affected son, uh, had a normal daughter, a normal son, and another affected daughter um, who actually affected her sons and this son actually affected their daughter. So again we have three generations which we'll get to in a second. But how does this one look? Looks like we don't really have any carriers so this one must be um, a dominant one. Um, is it sex linked or does it look like it's autosomal? It's autosomal because it seems to be affecting anybody. And then how many generations do you see? Again, we have grandparents, parents, and kids. Three generations. Okay, here's another term. Um, what do you think it means when we actually cross out individuals? These are deceased. So we looks like we have grandparents, parents, and kids again. Looks like we have uh, something that looks like they're non-effective that actually comes in and looks like we have one affected son. Uh, we have one normal son. We have one daughter. And we have one affected son. So we have two affected sons and a daughter with uh, one non-affected son. Um, looks like this son married this woman and they had two affected sons. This son married this woman and had a normal. These two uh, looked like normal, but we actually had this. So what do we get? We actually have a very recessive trait here. 
and this recessive trait if we take a look at it um, looks like it's only affected males so this is sex linked and again how many generations do we have this is three okay so here's another one it looks like we have a few more generations looks like we have an affected male that had an affected female and had a normal male married this normal one looks like the whatever the affliction, uh, affliction was ended um, this one actually has lots of offspring you can see going back down and looks like it affects everybody so is it a dominant or recessive one looks like we don't really have any carriers so it must be dominant is it sex linked or autosomal it looks like it's autosomal because it seems to be affecting everybody and then how many generations do you see here well it looks like we have how do we do this we've got one two three four five generations so do we have great grand great 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 grand parents and kids five generations okay this is a very famous uh, pedigree this is actually how we got uh, Elizabeth the current Queen of England and her husband Philip along with their one two three kids um, this one actually being oh what's his name um, the next king and the name slipping me this was Diana oh, that should actually help me it should go right together and these are their two kids William and Harry but if you take a look what we have we have hemophilia in this one we have a normal male and we have a hemophiliac male and we actually have a normal female and we have carrier female so Queen Victoria from way back when married Edward and it looks like Victoria came in as a uh, carrier married Albert and then we have another generation looks like we have some we have another generation looks like we have some uh, we have another generation looks like we have some and then for some reason it doesn't look like we have any another um, note is there's Nicholas and Alex Alexei who actually got married this is the king of Russia who got overthrown uh, when the Soviets came in and basically assassinated this whole branch of the family we're not sure about this one um, um, but we're pretty sure he had hemophilia so if you take a look we actually have one branch that comes in as being non-affected and that's the one that actually and I guess there's another branch that comes in um, that's not affected it looks like hemophilia excuse me hemophilia has been genetically taken out of this family tree but very famous uh, pedigree and how many generations do you see there's one two three four five and these all come from actually there's six and then seven and eight and nine and ten generations in this one okay um, what's a karyotype karyotype is a way we can actually look at an individual's chromosomes to see if there's going to be any problem we can do this with adults we can do this with babies uh, still developing in mom's uh, uterus but basically what we take a look at and we see we have 23 chromosomes we match them up the biggest pair called number one and the smallest pair called 22 I'm not sure why those guys are looking starry like, but most of them have this X shaped. Some of them really funkily X shaped. And then the last pair, the 23rd pair, are the sex chromosomes X and Y. One you got from your mom, one you got from your dad. Pretty easy to tell when they're different because dad determines the sex of the baby. You can see in a cell uh, when they're chromatin, uh, really not able to tell, although when they die, the chromosomes, the, or the chromosomes of the karyotype actually get different colors, helps them up out and then here are the 23 so we actually have uh, one set there and we have another set there and this is a picture of the uh, basically all the chromosomes all lined up and remember we have sister chromatids coming together so you put the like ones together and then we also have a couple problems that can happen in uh, meiosis remember we can have non -dis disjunction and this is when we actually have an egg cell and we have a normal uh, sperm cell the egg cell has an extra set of something in there and when this goes in this is a 2n which actually has the double set and the double set 
um, got a small one and a small one and a big one and a big one but has an extra big one for mom this is a 2n plus 1 and this is any time chromosomes do not separate correctly uh, in the process of meiosis and usually again it happens in meiosis 1 not so much in meiosis 2 non disjunction of meiosis 1 and you can see it takes a look you, when you look at it um, when it actually separates it separates into this one and this one so this is supposed to be over here and probably what's going to happen are these two gametes would uh, actually die and I'm not sure if I actually stated that anywhere in the PowerPoint or it was actually stated when a male goes through and just look at the numbers here and look at the numbers here when a male goes through uh, meiosis, the one germ cell becomes two germ cells, becomes four viable sperm. And then when the female comes uh, into it, what normally happens is uh, the chromosomes separate normally, but all the cytoplasm in this one, you know, 99% of it goes to this side, and then this side is much smaller. And when these two actually come together or uh, separate, these are non viable eggs which get. Uh, dissolved and get reincorporated into the female and then when the mass goes over to here most of the mass goes to one which will become the one viable egg and then yeah, don't look at the disjunctions in here um, so the, the one other one will come these are called polar cells and they basically are not viable um, so you get one egg through meiosis for females where you get four sperm for males um, and that's because uh, uh, well, I guess it's, it's deter determined by evolution, and it's because the egg will get fertilized, and the question is, is uh, if you only had one sperm going in, would it be able to find the egg to fertilize that egg? Okay, how do we tell mutations? When we actually look at these karyotypes, um, this is actually, there's another definition we're going to have to do here. Whether the mutation happens in a somatic cell, this is a normal body cell. Um, this means that the person with the mutation is the only one affected. And this is when a normal cell becomes like cancer. And you can't really pass on cancer to your kids. You can pa pass on a susceptibility to cancer because the cells may have uh, made a certain way, but it doesn't come through the autosomal cells. It would come through the germ cells. This is a mutation that gets passed on from one generation to another. And that actually happens in the germ cell. This is not a normal germ cell, so they're actually showing this mutation would go on to the zygote. So here's a karyotype. I'd like you to look at it and see if everything looks like it's the way it's supposed to. Don't worry about um, the different shape of the chromosomes. It's more the length of the chromosome and the lining up of the bands. And so what is this? Is this male or female? Well, we look at the last one. Looks like we have one of each of the sex chromosomes, so this is a male. And do they all look normal? I think they do. This is a normal. Well, there's no non-disjunction, so this is a normal male. Okay, same sort of thing. Look at the 23 chromosomes. See if you have any issue with any of the karyotype. Again, don't look at the weird shaped ones. Just look at the ones that, as long as both the pairs look like they're normal. Looks like we have a female here. And oh, what's that? So this is a female. And do they have a disjunction? A non-disjunction? Yes, they do. It's in pair 21. Chromosome pair 21. And this is called trisomy 21 and commonly called Down syndrome. So this is when a female's uh, X chromosomes for 21 do not disjunct and then another one comes in from the male and we get a non-disjunction so we have trisomy 21. Okay we look at this one uh, and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking um, so we actually have a well what do we have? The fact that we have an X we have a male. Do we have a non-disjunction? Looks like we do. Um, this male's got two X's and a Y and will pose genetic problems. Um, maybe actually make him uh, non-viable in terms of uh, reproducing. Okay, types of chromosomal mutations. I think we may have done these already. We have what are called deletions and insertions. A deletion is when the segment of the chromosome is deleted and you see the CD is gone and that's basically a shift to the left. And then we have an insertion where we actually see we have two CDs. Well, one of them got inserted in there. And this is where a segment is added. 
are inserted, and this is a shift to the right. And what do I mean by that? It takes all the genes and shifts them either this way or shifts them that way. Um, probably makes some of them not being able to be read correctly. And remember, 99% of the stuff on chromosomes is not read for genes. So it could happen in a section that's not uh, read. We also have what's called a uh, inversion. And this is when a section becomes backward. It kind of flips. And we have translocation where it actually seems to move from point to point. And you can see one of them is short, shortened and one of them is elongated. They get swapped for another. And these are all chromosomal mutations that can be uh, cause all kinds of problems. And if you take a look at this one, looks like we actually have a problem with chromosome pair 1. Looks like we have one with 3. Looks like we have one with 9 looks like no other. So we got translocation, um, basically where the things actually move from one side to, excuse me, one side to the other, uh, one side to the other, and then this one looks like we have a normal looking chromosome, but we have a deletion of material that was there. And that's the end of D. Thank you much for stopping by. And uh, A is evolution, so see you then.